Hello and welcome. You've checked in again at Crossroads here on Big Centre TV. Hope you're continuing to enjoy the show, awesome along every weeknight at 9 o'clock. Now if you haven't joined us before, Crossroads Check-In is your regular chance to air your views, see some interesting things and look ahead to what's coming up next. So later today I'll be checking in again with John Drury for another look at those locations used during the filming of Crossroads over the years. And we've got another rather interesting one for you this week. Also, we'll be visiting the post office to get some of the messages you've been sending us about Crossroads. And as I said, we'll be having a look back at the past week and forward to next week too. Do remember, if we haven't got round to mentioning your message just yet, don't worry, we've still got loads coming in each week and there isn't always time to mention them. But I'm keeping them safe and I'll have another selection for you today. So, if you want to write to us, then our postal address is Crossroads Check-In, Big Centre TV, 14A, Lower Hall Lane, Walsall, WS1, 1RL. And on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, just do a search for Big Centre TV. And you can send us messages through any of those as well. Okay, let's take a look at some of the messages we've received recently. And up first is an email from Stuart Harris in Stourbridge. Stuart says, Hi, thanks for bringing us the fantastic Crossroads again. Favourite characters, Meg, Jill, Sandy, Amy and Vera. In the last check-in, you posed the question, why were some episodes kept and not others? I'm wondering whether that has anything to do with the fact that Crossroads wasn't networked as such. ATV and several other ITV companies would show the programme at 6.35, whilst HTV and several other companies would show it at 5.20. Therefore, the companies that showed it at 5.20 would need their own tape of Crossroads. Maybe sometimes these companies would keep the tapes and not wipe them. I really enjoyed the episodes following Sandy's accident, including the scenes at Coventry Cathedral. Keep up the good work, from Stuart Harris. Well, thanks very much, Stuart. Glad you're enjoying Crossroads. You know what? Oddly enough, I was having a very similar conversation with someone in the office recently. It also crossed my mind that if the other ITV companies show Crossroads at a different time, then perhaps copies of the tapes were indeed sent around the country. Although, if the episodes were shown on the same day, albeit at a different time, then quite often ATV would simply play out the episode to the regions beforehand on the private circuit. Then the receiving company would record it, show it, and then reuse the tape for the next day's episode. That said, one or two episodes have surfaced from being saved on some of these types of tapes. Now, as you'll probably know, Kaleidoscope, the Archive TV Society, which is behind Big Centre TV, they're constantly talking with ITV and other companies that used to be a part of ITV, as well as other individuals, and they often turn up some interesting things. So let's watch and see. You never know what might still be out there. <laughs> Next up is a very interesting message about someone from behind the scenes. Now the message is from Darren Gray and he says Dear Lee, I was interested to see John Drury's excellent report from Coventry Cathedral on today's edition of Crossroads Check-In. These episodes of Crossroads were directed by my late client and friend Alan Coleman, who joined the serial from its inception and remained with it until 1972 when he was appointed head of children's drama for ATV in the Midlands. These episodes were particularly poignant for Alan as he had personally witnessed the destruction of the cathedral during the Blitz. In his early days as a cameraman, he shot his own documentary called The Rebirth of Coventry Cathedral, and whilst recording this, he met, by total chance, the architect, Sir Basil Spence. It was this documentary which helped him on his way to becoming a director with ATV. Some viewers may be aware that Alan went on to become a renowned producer, director and writer of soap operas around the world. He was the driving force behind the Australian serial The Young Doctors as its producer and also wrote and directed many hundreds of episodes. Amongst his many other credits were being the executive producer of Neighbours. A lot of anecdotes about his time working on Crossroads can be found in his autobiography One Door Shuts, published by Trafford Publishing. I'll close by wishing you continued success with Crossroads check-in. I'm attaching a photo of Alan rehearsing a scene for Crossroads in his back garden with cast members Noel Gordon and John Bentley, and one of him on location with Noel Gordon and Susan Hansen. All the very best, Darren Gray. And there they are. Well, thanks, Darren, for getting in touch and for the photos too. I know that in the early days of Big Centre, we did a feature about Alan in the Post Dad programme. Now, I worked on that show and I know how well it was received. I also remember Alan's name from Crossroads, and I remember recognising his name on the various Grundy organisation productions that Darren mentions. But it wasn't until a few years later that I realised it was the same person. What a great message. Thanks, Darren. Now, a couple of Crossroads memories now, and Martin Enser has been in touch. He says, Hi, Lee. I have a Crossroads memory for your check-in. In the late 1970s, I used to cycle up to Tanworth in Arden with my friend. We would have been about 13 at the time. We saw Crossroads being filmed. I can remember large blue lorries with ATV on the sides. 
miles of cable and lights, lots of technical staff, enough for a major film. We watched Benny being chased down the side of the local pub. <laughs> the scene lasted seconds, but I can remember how long it took to prepare and rehearse this scene. Today, this type of filming would probably involve one man on a small camera and one operating a sound boom. We watched the event for about two hours. I remember avidly watching Crossroads each night to see the extract, which I finally saw and it lasted seconds. Such was the effort ATV put into the outside broadcast in terms of resources. Hope this information is useful to your programme. It certainly is, Martin. Thanks for that. Now, Crossroads, Crossroads, as we know, had a long relationship with Tamworth in Arden, uh, all the way back to the end of the original series in 1988. And you write about how things have probably changed in the way that they make programmes these days. Mind you, I'm sure that those who worked on it back in the day are still proud of having done a good job, and it's still so fondly remembered. Just time for one more. This time it's from Judy in Solihull, who has a personal memory of meeting one of the Crossroads cast. Judy says... I worked at Tesco in Five Ways in Birmingham back in the 70s. I was sitting at my till one day and I saw a customer heading my way. It was Sue Hansen. She was followed by half the staff in the store who couldn't believe their eyes. She brought some fruit and was very pleasant. From Judy in Solihull. Thanks Judy, that's what we like to hear. It backs up what I said about how uh, big Crossroads uh, was back then and also how nice the cast were too. So, if you met the stars of the show, or if you have a Crossroads related question, or a Crossroads story, or a particularly strong Crossroads memory, or you remember stories from episodes that are missing, perhaps you've even got an old episode on tape, why don't you get in touch with us? On good old social media, dead simple. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, do a search for Big Centre TV. Use the hashtag BCTV Crossroads to highlight your message. The email address is crossroads at bigcentre.tv. And finally, our postal address, as ever, Crossroads Check In, Big Centre TV. 14A Lower Hall Lane, Walsall, WS1 1RL. Now still to come today, we'll be previewing some of the episodes you should be seeing during next week here on Big Centre TV. And John Drury will be checking in with us to take another fascinating look at some of the Crossroads real life locations. Now it's time to look back across the week at what's been happening in and around our favourite motel. She knows what it's all about, doesn't she? I know, the toys all over the place. You know, if we'd had some sense, we'd have saved some until we got home. Yeah. Jane, oh, but that. darling, you're not Jane. going for days yet. You are waiting until the party tomorrow. Of course we are. We wouldn't miss it for the world. Good. We're putting her ladyship to bed early, so she'll be no problem. <laughs> yeah. She's going to be punch drunk oh, yeah. after today, I would think. <laughs> I know exactly <laughs> how she feels. I mean, what more could you want? Well, speaking no. personally... What are you hankering after, Amy? Well, seeing as it's tea time... Oh, I've got a nice oh, 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 the words right out of my mouth. Bravo, Mr. Well 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 beautiful cake. Oh, oh. Hello. A bit of a secret. I didn't see you doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, can you hold on? Yes, for you. Oh, my fault. Come on, come on. Hello? <laughs> Sandy? Mm, Sandy? Oh, hold on, darling. All together. Happy, Happy Christmas! Christmas. Oh, what a win! It's more like January out there. Oh. Miss Diane, she say it's good for complexion. Well, what does she know about it? She never goes out. At least not to do any work. She be always working. Well, where is she now? We don't know. She, she, she do say dinner time she would go in village. It's just you and me, eh, Benny boy? For tea, I mean. Oh, yeah. Unless you'd like something else. What, what do you mean? Oh, coffee, cocoa. What did you think I meant? C can I just ask you something, Mr Hunter? Something personal? Well? Yes, well, I hardly like to bring it up. Uh, well, will you please say what you have to say? I'm very busy. Well, it's about... Avis. There's a day off or something. Who? Avis? No, she's gone to work at another hotel. What? Do you mean she's left? That is what I say. Excuse me. Goodness, I'm tired. Yeah, I must say, you look exhausted. Yeah, I've noticed it's much more tiring when you haven't got enough to do than when you're rushed off your feet. <laughs> I might as well go home. Oh, I thought you still got a customer. She is doing a... Oh, I wonder if she's got the time. How do you mean? Well, with all the work she does in the evening. No more than anyone else. Oh, you must be joking. I don't know what you're talking about. We're talking about our sideline. You know, home hairdressing. Well, surely you know. I mean, you must have heard she's been around everybody touting for business. So that's it. That explains everything. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, she's been doing it for weeks. For weeks. 
Look, let's get this straight. Sheila, my assistant, has been doing hairdressing at home at nights for weeks. Yeah, that's right. I'll kill her! I'll damn well kill her! Right, we're just going to take a short break now, but don't you go anywhere, because in part two, we'll be taking a look ahead to what's coming up on Crossroads during next week. And John Drury will be here with his latest location report. Don't check out, we'll be back in a few minutes. Welcome back and thanks for checking in with Crossroads here on Big Centre TV. Still to come, we're going to have a look ahead to some of the episodes we're going to be showing you during the coming week. But first, it's time to pop outdoors and see some of the places where Crossroads would film over the years then and now with John Drury. Hello, thanks for joining me as today we take a very special look at just one of the most beautiful and iconic of all of the locations used by the Crossroads production team. Located in the heart of Worcestershire is the Chateau Impney Hotel. In the early 1970s, Crossroads producers renamed it the Droitwich, and it formed the impressive backdrop to some important location shooting. Fortunately for fans of the series, its exterior has changed little over the last 40 years. In 1973, the characters of Meg, Kevin and Timothy were seen attending a conference at the hotel. Meg was somewhat surprised to find that old flame Hugh Mortimer was also in attendance. Will you tell Mr. Barry that I'm sorry I've had to leave so suddenly, and I'll telephone him to explain. All right? Thank you. Hey, what's all this then? I'm leaving. Uh, but what about the conference? Yes, I know. And the, uh, the, the yes. dinner party? Well, we'll have to cancel it. Uh. Until recently, the hotel still featured the reception desk seen here, although as part of an extensive modernisation programme, the area has since been refurbished, creating a new light and airy entrance. The bar, also seen here in 1973, has changed much less over the last 40 years and is still very recognisable. In this scene we see Meg's attitude towards Hugh mellowing. The Grand Bar, to give it its proper title, is the perfect spot to admire some of the impressive original features of the chateau, including the Jacobean staircase and spectacular stained glass window. Parts of the hotel interior also featured as the Crossroads Motel. You can tell that this scene is set in the motel by the conveniently placed sign in the back of the shot. If you look carefully, you'll see that it's resting on a bar stool. In fact, the very same stools that still stand within the hotel. In this scene, Timothy, Hugh and Kevin are relaxing on the terrace. From here, you can see the view across the chateau's beautiful ornamental gardens. What about your lecture? Set within 110 acres of picturesque grounds yes, and featuring grand French-style architecture, today the chateau is still a popular choice for couples celebrating their wedding. The romantic setting certainly worked for Megan Hugh, as it was within the hotel restaurant that he finally popped the question. As we jump forwards to 1975, what better place for Megan Hugh to celebrate their marriage than back at the Droitwich Hotel? Although the metalwork above the seating area is hiding it, the alcove featuring the statue is in fact the same one we saw earlier in the scene set at the Crossroads Motel. Meg and Hugh have their wedding breakfast in what is now known as the Burgundy Suite. It features an original decorative ceiling. The plasterwork on the walls and the light fittings are unchanged, although the room now features controllable lighting and modern conference facilities. The magnificent cast iron fountain, which appears in the foreground of this slightly awkward looking kiss, sits as a centrepiece of the ornamental gardens. It's a great spot to view the hotel grounds and take in your surroundings. It's difficult to believe that Birmingham International Airport is just 25 minutes away. Construction of the building began in 1873 and it was completed in 1875. The original staircase still connects each floor of the hotel and it's overlooked by a series of stained glass windows. The main window features the iconic literary figures of Chaucer, Shakespeare and Spencer. The hotel became a Grade 2 listed building in June 1965 and it's a stunning location and looking around it's easy to see why it was chosen by the producers over 40 years ago.
and John will be with us again in a couple of weeks' time. Next week, we'll be checking in once more with Jane Rossington for more of her Crossroads memories. OK, now it's time to look ahead to what we can expect during the coming week's episodes of Crossroads here on Big Centre TV. And remember that there might be just a few potential spoilers ahead. Now, as with the previous four episodes, the next four also come from an omnibus edition, as the original versions no longer exist. But here at Big Centre TV, we're running them again in a version as close to the original as possible. Now, episodes 2527, 2528, 2529 and 2530 are from May 1976. Diane tries to convince Ed that Benny should be a partner in the farm, but he has his doubts. Meanwhile, David tries to entice Kelly to a riverside picnic, and Vera is mugged for the cash box she was carrying. Let's take a look at some of the things from these episodes. Ed, have you, um, have you thought any more about what we were talking about? What was that? Making Benny a partner. Oh, you must be joking, Diane. Him run a farm? He's just... Uh... A farmer's boy, and he'll always be one. Listen, I seem to remember you telling me I was wasting my time teaching him to read and write. Yeah. All right. If he's not here soon, I, I want my breakfast. All right, then. Sit down. You can start. Well, <laughs> oh, here he is. Morning. Hello, Benny. You're a bit late, you know. Your breakfast's all frazzled up. Oh, I could eat toast. Here you go. You, you were going into the village dinner time? Yeah, why? Wonder if you could pick up comic where I order. A comic? Comic. Don't forget, Diane, to pick up my partner's comic. Oh, shut up. Partner? Yeah, partner. Diane's been going on at me to make you a partner in this small hole in Benny, so that we can manage it together. Partner? You mean me? That's a good one, isn't it? Me and Gaff are partners. <laughs> That's a real good one. Satisfied? Morning, all. Morning, Cully. You look happy. Oh, how can I help it on such a lovely sunny day? You know, the more I travel, the more I think there's nothing to beat England in May. I'm pleased to hear it. Hmm? Anything that makes here better than all your far-flung assignments. Oh, I see. In fact, since it is such a lovely day, why don't we have a picnic by the river? Do you remember the inlet where we found the wild violets? Oh, I'd love to. Thanks, David. You, you find someone? Yes, they didn't say cheap, but I'll get them to come round and give us an estimate. Well, it's very nice to see you back, Kelly, all in one piece. And the old place hasn't been the same without you. Nice to be back, too. Oh, I hear that that Malay girl's been taken ill again. Nothing serious, I hope. I, uh, think she's going to be all right. Ah, oh, good. I'll have your car ready for six, right? Thank you. Crossroads Motel. Mr. Hunter, still in the salon, Carney. Oh, no, he went, he went about half an hour ago. I thought you'd gone home, do love. I've been working late, getting the accounts up to date. Are you sure there's nobody on duty? Only me. Oh, hell. I wanted to get this in the safe. Well, that's your takings. Yeah, and the insurance stamp money. Oh, I should have taken it in earlier. Well, why don't you lock it up in the saloon? I mean, be all right, I'm here. Yeah. Well, thanks all the same, Carney, but I'd better not. I haven't forgotten the last time. Had trouble before, have you? Yeah, it was a long time ago, but some yob broke into the salon and practically tore the place apart. Wash basins broken, mirrors, hair dryers, you name it. Andy went off with the takings. There was a night watchman on duty then. Oh, that he didn't know his job. Be all right now, because I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, well, time all the same, Carney, but uh, I'd better take it with me. Oh, well, suit yourself. Uh, wouldn't like another cup of tea before you go, would you? No, thanks, love. All right. That would have got he'd be if there's a break-in. <laughs> Good night. Sure. Oh, come in, come in, hang on, hang on. Hey, Vera! Some bloke! What happened? I don't know. Sit down, Ed. He came up behind me. Oh, yeah. Well, after your money, were he? Yeah, and he got it. The lot. Cash box, handbag, the whole damn lot. <gasps> Episode 2581 is from August 1976. David sets up dinner plans he will come to regret, and Sandy has to deal with an old woman who'd expected to die before her bill became due for payment. Meanwhile, Mrs Whitten accuses Glenda of theft. Uh, well, uh, what's the problem now? It's about the bill we sent Mrs Addy for all the food and drinks. And the trouble is, I can't pay. Yes, well, that does present a bit of a problem. Uh... You see, I ordered it all on the assumption that I wouldn't be needing money in the future. I put it in an envelope and gave it to the girls. It was my last penny of life savings. But there is one way out, I'm happy to say. 
Tell me. I'm very willing to pay off in instalments. Ah. Say, 50p per week. Oh. My, my latest um, <clears throat> consultation with the crystal, which is now, I'm glad to say, getting attuned to my vibrations, shows without a shadow of doubt that I'm going to live to 93. 93? At least. Tell me, does your crystal ball indicate that we are all going to last that long? And that's all to come on Crossroads here on Big Centre TV throughout the summer, Monday to Saturday at 9. Right, I'll be back at the same time next week. So, as always, if there's something about Crossroads you'd like to tell us about, anything at all, whatever, just get in touch. Do a search for us on social media at Big Centre TV, email crossroads at bigcentre.tv, or actually write to us, and that address again, Crossroads Check-In, Big Centre TV, 14A, Lower Hall Lane, Walsall, WS1, 1RL. Thanks for checking in with Crossroads. I'll see you again next week. Mm -hmm.